What's up guys, it's Connor here, and I got a pretty exciting gameplay, or gameplays for you guys today. I've got my first one, I've got back-to-back -back team deathmatch Moabs I got here on Saturday morning, and they were pretty good. My first one was a 33-0 flawless resistance team deathmatch, and the second one was a 33-1 team deathmatch with the Moab and both of them. So they're pretty good, I hope you enjoy. Plus, I'm talking finally, finally talking about my uncle who had he's actually my great uncle so he's basically a grandpa but he's not my grandpa he's other people's grandpa and so he ex escape 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 however you want to say it the german or the yeah the nazis he escaped their concentration camp and death he escaped both of them so he escaped the nazis twice pretty awesome story about like god just protected him so i'll be talking about that in this gameplay and this is obviously going to be pretty long because it's two games put together so i'll be put so i'll probably end up throwing on some music at the end there and i've got actually three really great bands i love listening to that i'll probably start putting in videos more frequently so therefore i won't have to commentate all of them and i might be able to get you guys out consistently more three three games a week maybe four it'll especially help during the summer when i'll be putting out a game Almost probably a good four or five days a week. I'll be able to just slap on some of this music great music Hope you guys will love it if not just mute it and go watch, go listen to your own music and just watch the gameplay so Well actually first before I get into this since I like complaining to you guys all the time about Call of Duty and how it hates me I just want to quickly from my video on Tuesday You all obviously know that the game already hates me basically life hates me so I want to just my first six games on Sunday morning where I was in a party with Logan, but we don't actually play together really anymore. We all like to just be in a party, but play our own games. It makes it a little easier to get MOABs. Logan actually ended up getting three in one day, which was pretty sweet since he only had one before, and then he got three on Saturday. So that was crazy, but anywho, so since the game already hates me, obviously, what, what went down on Sunday was my first six games... In five of my first six games on Sunday, I either died or had the game end while I was on a 17 or higher. So here's a rundown. One game, 17, I the game ends while I'm using the L86. These were all in Team Deathmatch. Using the L86 light machine gun. All right, another game, using the M4 or something. Game ends on a 22. And then just using some more regular... Oh, no, the PM9. The game, I, the game ended up ending on a 22 also. And then the next three games after that... One of the games I didn't end up doing well in, but actually two of the next three games, I died on the 17 and I died on the 19. And I was just like, oh my goodness, five of my first six games I should have had a Moab in and I screwed it over. Would have been pretty sweet too with like the L86 and the PM9, some pretty crappy guns there. But it's whatever guys, it's all fun and games. So now that you're probably bored and don't even want to watch any more of this, let's get quickly into how my how my uncle went all James Bond on him and basically just he survived the Nazis, which was sweet. So what happened was during World War II, US was or well the Nazis were killing all the Jews, they're sending bombings over and all that stuff. And so what my uncle did was he was he lives in Holland. I'm actually like 75% Dutch. I got the blonde hair, the blue eyes. I live in um I live in Indiana, so I'm not I'm obviously don't live over in Holland, but I got the blonde hair, the blue eyes, my grandma, grandpa and my other grandma are all Dutch and then I'm like 25 or yeah, 25% like American or whatever they call it, English, whatever. And so I'm pretty got the pretty standard Dutch look going on, but what ends up happening is he was working for the US basically. He was about 17 years old. Heard the story numerous times from my dad, from him, from his wife. Plenty of people I've told this story to. And what he did was he was living over in Holland and the US came over. And now obviously he was not for the Nazis. So what he ended up doing was he ended up being like a spy, so say, for the or for the Americans that were over there. What he'd do is there was this really tall hill up there that he'd go up on, and while he, at night he'd ride his bike up under the cover of darkness so no one would see him. He'd ride his bike up on the hill, and he could see bombings like the, the Nazi planes going over, and he, if he saw the planes coming in, he'd race back down to the U.S. He'd be like, hey guys, bombing, bomb planes coming in. U.S. could then signal all the Holland, Netherlandese, whatever they call them, the Dutch people, they could signal all those people around there to all go get in hiding and stuff because sometimes you can hear the planes from a great distance but if he could see him, he could get the word out faster, and he could also tell the Americans where they were coming in from, from up there. So he'd do that. He'd ride up there. He'd just see basically what was going on. It looked over like a concentration camp, kind of, and he could really just he'd just report back everything he saw over 
to the um to the American troops. Now, in order to get food, though, he had to actually go and steal food from the um, German trucks, from the Nazi trucks, because they were poor, and the Nazis obviously weren't just like handing food out to everybody. So he he'd end up stealing food. And one time, he actually ended up getting caught while stealing food from one of these German trucks. So what happens is um. He gets caught stealing from German trucks. So what they do is they like they capture him or whatever, and they're like they're taking him in and they put him on a train to help to send him over to a concentration camp somewhere. So he's on this train and he's going and he's like, I gotta get out of this train because he's he was helping out the U.S. troops a lot. There's a couple other kids doing it too. There's um they there's just a couple inside guys that were all like teenage friends that were helping out the U.S. and he ended up getting caught along with um a couple other the kids got caught too. But what he ended up doing was, <laughs> this isn't about the other kids, this is about my uncle. Jeez, no, but anywho, any, okay, whatever. Restart, woo, here we go. Okay, so he's on the train get going over to the concentration camp, and he, he tells the guard guy, he's like, I gotta go to the bathroom. And so the guy's like, all right, whatever, and he gets him up, and he pushes him and sends him down to the back of the train. And the bathroom was actually like its own separate mini, mini train car. And what it did was there was a guard standing in front of the door, to exit out of the train that he was sitting in so there's the train car that he's sitting in and there's a guard standing at that door and to get to the bathroom you have to actually cross over from one train car to the, to the next so you know you walk outside the train and then go back in so there's a guard standing right on the exit of the train he's in so he the guard lets him out to go to the bathroom and the guard shuts the door and when he shuts the door my uncle walks over so he's standing in between the two trains and acts like he's going to go into the bathroom but the guard's not paying any more attention anymore. He's looking back towards towards the um, passenger car that he's supposed to be keeping watch of. So my uncle just jumps off the side of the train. This is I'm not kidding, guys. This is legit what he's told me, what I've heard from about four different people that know what happened. So unless my uncle was lying, then I don't know. But this is what went down. He ended up jumping off the train and, like, rolling down the hill. Down, like, there was, like, a grassy... Um, embankment there or whatever you want to call it so he jumped off and rolled down the hill and just kind of hid in the cover of the bushes until the train went all the way past when the train went past he got up and just started walking down the train track um just doing whatever you know walking down trying to get back to the city and this farmer this dutch farmer ended up seeing him over on the side and he's just like come here come here and he gives him a ride back into the city so my uncle's now back in the city he pulled a complete james bond move on that train right there jumped off went down the hill he's now back in the city thanks to a nice dutch farmer and so he's there he's spying again and he ends up getting caught again along with eight 17 other guys 16 or 17 other guys end up getting caught because they're um they're called Jews. They're well they think they are Jews. And so what happens is they take them up to the hill where my uncle had been riding his bike up and looking out over the concentration camp. He rides his bike up on the hill and he's or he's not riding his bike up on the hill. They're forcing him up on the hill with seven sixteen or seventeen other young men that they think are Jews. And my uncle's at the end of the line and there's sixteen other guys there. And so these sixteen other guys are all lined up and he just the guard guy just goes through and just shoots each one they're all chained together and so he just go, starts going down the line shooting each guy in the head and what he does is he gets over to my uncle and the red cross nurse that was there goes no 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 stop stop so there are 16 of his guys laying down next to him and he's the last one alive and the nurse is like no stop it stop it he's not a jew you can't prove that he's a jew all the other guys they could prove they were jews this guy, my uncle, didn't said he was not a Jew because he wasn't. He was like a Catholic or a Christian. And he's like, I'm not a Jew. I'm not a Jew. And the nurse is like, you have to believe him. He is not a Jew. So they end up ha they end up letting him go because that is the law. That is like Hitler's law. You can't shoot non-Jews, really. and Because that was what this whole thing was about. was about killing the Jews. So they let him go. So 16 of his buddies got shot. He ended up being the only one alive, which was crazy. But he kept in touch with this nurse, Red Cross nurse lady, and they, she even told the story again. I mean, I know this is true. It was just crazy. So God definitely had his hand around my uncle there, and he ended up getting down, and the nurse is just like, you got to get out of here. So they ship my uncle and his brother and his sister all come over to the U.S., and now his brother was my grandma that I talked about, or his sister was my grandma that I talked about dying not too long ago. That was my grandma who just died. He died. His name was Paul. He ended up dying about um, about two years ago, I believe. And then his brother is still alive. Just saw him on Easter. Still alive and going and going well. And so they're all great people. Which was, It was just a crazy story of how he had escaped the Jews 
all the great, great stuff he had did. He had was helping out the Americans and just sending info back, and he ended up coming over here, making a better life for um, his brother and his sister, who he watched over um, very closely. Because what they, what the, he had actually ended up doing was him and his brother had built a house in Holland for his sister, who was my grandma, and his brother, who was my other uncle, to stay in. So they're staying, so he built that house for them, and they ended up having to fend for themselves, basically. Their parents all got captured and taken away, and they never really saw them again. Um, they got, they saw them again because they ended up getting out of the concentration camps when the war ended. But they were fending for themselves, and he ended up coming over with them three. They built an, um, another house here in America, lived in that house for a while. They all were now old enough, and so they all split up on their own ways. And it was just a great story. He met his wife actually when he was like 16 so he actually met his, who his wife was before he ended up getting captured and they moved over here together and so it's just a great story guys so i hope you enjoyed this story i will see you guys later adios